Welcome back to Life and Living. I'm joined in the studio right now by Dr. Brian Greenwald, who's the medical director at JFK's Center for Head Injuries and also the associate medical director at JFK Johnson Rehabilitation Institute. Um, break it down for us. What's your specialty? What's your focus? My specialty is in brain injury rehabilitation. I take care of people for across the continuum who have had brain injuries, everything from mild or severity brain injuries like concussions to more severe injuries where people are initially in a coma and really need to be hospitalized uh, initially or need more inpatient rehabilitation. Let's break this down a bit more. What is a brain injury? What happens to the brain? Well, we're talking about a brain injury. We're talking about an external force to the head uh, causing uh, damage or, or injury to the, the cells, the soft tissue of the brain underneath the skull. Uh, they're smart enough to in, in case that soft uh, brain of ours uh, that does everything that we are, all our thinking, all our memories, really all our emotions, everything we are, uh, but such an important structure put in this hard skull of ours. Now it is encased in some fluid and it's, it's relatively safe in there, but we as humans take risks, we do things, we have activities that definitely put us at greater risk for banging our head. What are some of those activities? Well, uh, certainly uh, our sports related activities, we're seeing that a lot with our, our football players, hockey players, our cheerleaders, uh, uh, su surprisingly how cheerleading is actually a, a high risk sport and uh, that they would otherwise think of that specifically certainly can be. Uh, the most common reason overall for traumatic brain injury uh, is, is falls, uh, particularly in the elderly uh, population, but falls just in general. Motor vehicles certainly are high up there also, particularly in a motor vehicle society that we live in. So give us a range of injuries that go from the, you know, not so severe to, wow, you know, this really needs to be treated and, and this is a much more intense injury to the brain. Well, I, I think the, an important thing that, that you bring up there is what needs to be treated. And there's really no brain injury that's too mild that shouldn't have some sort of assessment, that's for sure. You know, the brain is the most important structure that we have in our body. I, I'm saying that uh, because I, I do work in brain injury, but, but it really is. I mean, it really is everything you are, your personality, your memory, your emotions, your movements, really everything that you do. Uh, unfortunately, it's not until people have a brain injury that they often can appreciate how, how significant the brain really is. And so uh, the Brain Injury Association or the Brain Injury Alliance uh, often talks about that no brain injury is too mild uh, to be assessed and to get treatment. And I think that's completely true. Uh, you know, people with concussion certainly oftentimes will have evaluation that's on the sports field, will have evaluation uh, there on the field, should be taken out of the game and have an, an assessment by someone who really knows about it. Uh, when it comes to more severe injuries, uh, you want to make sure that you're going to see someone who really understands uh, how to treat severe injuries. That's an important point you bring up. That, you know, a lot of parents, are, we see those parents that kind of want to push the kid back into the game, that think the kid's okay, and actually a lot of times coaches do the same thing. Um, let's talk about concussion. If, if our kid is playing a sport, what are the signs of a concussion? What should we be looking for? Um, I, in, certainly the injury itself. Um, you know, was there any injury to the head? Did the, did, does the child seem out of it afterwards? Uh, coaches should definitely understand what a concussion is, what are the symptoms and signs of concussion. That kid looks like he's had his, his bell rung. Uh, he doesn't remember the last play. He doesn't remember where we're playing. He doesn't remember the team that he's on. Uh, certainly, the, the, it's a, a variety of things that may be found. The balance may be off. Their vision may be off. All common symptoms seen early on so important to take the kid out of, out of that game, so important. There's a lot of pressure from the, the parents, the coach, the other, the, the other teammates, because uh, this is a good kid, we want him to stay in, this could be important for his career. And he might look okay. And he might look okay. And a lot of times, is it a common misconception that people think you have to lose consciousness to actually suffer a concussion? I think you're absolutely right, yes. Uh, that you do not need to lose consciousness to have had a concussion. In fact, actually, the, the minority of people uh, lose uh, consciousness after it, when they've had a concussion, a, a small percentage, uh, relatively speaking. But it's those symptoms of sort of that altered state of consciousness. If someone does have a concussion, what should you do, especially if they're a young athlete? I think the first thing is to take them out of the game. Um, beyond that, there are there are certain uh, requirements as far as getting the kid back to the game. And one of the things is that they should be asymptomatic. And asymptomatic, not just at rest, have no symptoms, not just at rest, but when they're 
active, not ha having symptoms. Is uh, time key? Is it just letting the brain, letting the swelling go down? I think early on that's one of the key things. And, and it's not so much swelling, but the brain cells themselves not working correctly. Um, a minimum of a week uh, of taking the kid out, but but after a concussion and giving some time for the brain to heal as to avoid the risk of another concussion while the brain is still healing. Um, but really waiting until the child is asymptomatic. Uh, there's a, a conference in Zurich and that the paper was published last year as an, another conference amongst experts that really talked about this and, and highlighted it well. Uh, I think the states have now 47 uh, states and the, uh, the Washington DC all have laws about concussion. Just talking about how critical it is for our children, uh, our little children, uh, and, and recognizing concussion, making sure that they have appropriate access to treatment. And as parents, how can, how can we safeguard our kids? Uh, there are a lot of activities, summer's here, we've got bike riding, you know, the, those razors that just scare me to death because it looks like someone's going to kill themselves. Um, but it's not just the summertime, it's the winter with snowboarding, with skiing. What precautions and what steps should we take to safeguard our kids? Well, an easy one is helmets, right? Helmets is thought to decrease your risk of brain injury by 85%. A tremendous number, honestly. And uh, obviously there's all the social issues like, oh, you're wearing a helmet, you know. I, it I might not be cool. Might not be cool, exactly. That's just a big issue. I think as parents, one of the things we need to do, which I see in, too often, is is that the parents not wearing a helmet. Mm. Uh, the laws may only talk about, you know, uh, kids and teenagers wearing helmets, but it's so important to set a good example ourselves. But in, ensuring that that helmet is used across that spectrum of uh, of risky uh, sports, and those are all fun sports also, so I don't right. want to say that you shouldn't necessarily do those things. We want our kids out there being active, but we want them doing it safely. Right, exactly, exactly. I, you know, in football in particular, uh, I think the, the challenge is how, what's the age that a kid should play tackle football? And there's a lot of controversy about that. Um, I, I think most people think probably not before 13 or 14 until the brain has had a little more time to mature. Uh, the brain takes a long time to mature, just in general doesn't really mature until the like 20s and 30s. Uh, but with, but from a bone perspective and a brain perspective, probably a little later for playing tackle football. A lot of important things to think about. Parents need to be responsible, make sure they're protecting those kids. Dr. Brian Greenwald, thank you so much for sharing these important tips. Hopefully people pay attention, keep those kids in helmets. It's the most important thing they can do. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like more information on this program, or if you'd like to tell us about a great New Jersey destination, email us at info at caucusnj.org or visit us on the web at www.lifeandliving.org.